Brothers and sisters, it is important for us to constantly consider our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us so many blessings. If we were to count them, we would never be able to count all of them. If you are to try and count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you, you would not be able to count them all, subhanallah. Indeed, man is oppressive and he is ungrateful, subhanallah. Man is oppressive and ungrateful. So my brothers and sisters, in order to combat this, we need to realize one thing. And that is constantly be thankful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Constantly be thankful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah has given you something, let it be a means of making you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah has tested us, usually we become closer to Allah because we want to make dua. We want to supplicate to Allah. So we become closer to Allah when He tests us by taking things away. Someone is not well, they are sick, they are ill. What happens? They begin to make dua to Allah. They supplicate, they call out to Allah because they are sick, because they are ill. Subhanallah. But when the opposite is to happen where when you are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not allow that to turn you away from Allah. Let it be a means of bringing you closer to Allah. That is the successful. There are many people who have a lot of blessings, but not many of them would actually be the believers who turn to Allah because of the blessings. When you look at the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَآ بِجَانِبِهِ When we bless man, when we have blessed man, you find him turning away from us and he goes on to his side. The minute Allah takes away things from a person, you find that different people do different things. But a believer would turn to Allah both in good conditions and in difficult conditions. I must make mention that this being the first Jumu'ah and the first Salah here in this beautiful masjid, in this lovely part of the northern part of Nigeria, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity to attend this masjid and to be part of Salatul Jumu'ah today. May Allah accept it from us. And the reason why I say this is Masajid are known as the houses of Allah. Indeed, these places where we put our heads on the ground, they belong to Allah. You cannot put your head on the ground for anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, don't call out to anyone besides Allah. The Masjid is Baytullah. If it is the house of Allah, and if you are connected to the house of Allah, it means you have a connection with Allah. And this is why one narration says, from among those who will earn the shade of Allah on the day of Qiyamah, there are those who, subhanallah, those whose hearts were connected to the house of Allah. If your heart is connected to the house of Allah, you are a VIP. Because you are connected to Allah. How can I be connected to your house when I am not connected to you? I can only be connected to your house and come to your house often when I have a good relationship with you. So Allah is saying to us, if you are connected to my house, you come for Salah, you are here for Fajr, you are here for Dhuhr, you are here for Salatul Isha, you come for Jumu'ah and so on. It means you are connected to me. And if you are connected to me, you will be a VIP on the day of judgment. May Allah grant that to us. Rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakum bil masajid. 
But for me, there is something more interesting where many of us, if we take a look at our lives, we want to earn money. When we earn money, we want to do certain things. We will have a good motor vehicle. We want to have a very nice home. We will build a very nice house. And how many years will we be living in that house? To be honest, very few. Maybe our children might live there if we are lucky or one of them at least. Very few are going to live in the house that you built. And very few years will you live in the same house. By the time we usually have a house that is a house of our dreams, we are already quite old. And when we are old, the average lifespan of Banu Adam, according to the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is between 60 and 70 years. So we will already just live for a few years and go. But it is not bad. It is not something haram. It is not prohibited to build such a house. However, consider, have you built a house of the hereafter for yourself? That is more important. What have you done so that you can have a palace in the hereafter? What did you do so that the people, subhanallah, who are obviously around us have been reminded of Allah such that we are constantly thinking to ourselves, when I pass away, where will I go? Have I prepared an abode? Have I prepared some house? Have I built my palace? So how do we build that palace? We build it in many ways by developing your relationship with Allah, by doing good deeds, your salah, your tilawah of the Quran, your adhkar, that dhikr that we turn away from. That is how we will build our palace in Jannatul Firdaus. If there is dhikr that you fulfill every morning, every evening, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al azim glory be to Allah, praise be to Allah, Allah is the greatest, etc. These are powerful words that would result in the bricks that will build your house of the hereafter. But if Allah has blessed you with wealth and you have humility with that wealth, you are already heading into the right company of the hereafter. If Allah has blessed you with authority and you have humility with authority, you will be joining the ranks of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi if you are a true believer. If Allah has blessed you with anything in this world and you have humility with that, together with your iman, you are heading in the right direction. And if Allah has blessed you with wealth and you have built a house for the sake of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tells us, Man bana lillahi masjidan bana lahu baytan fil jannah. Whoever builds for Allah a house genuinely for the service of the deen, genuinely to bring the Muslim ummah together, to give them a facility to come together to worship Allah as an ummah, to bring them together, not to separate them. If someone builds a masjid to separate people, the Quran speaks about that separation as being something that will be a driving force for them to lose the hereafter. But if we build a house, Lillahi, man bana Lillahi masjidan, whoever builds a house of Allah, a masjid for Allah, the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah will build for him a house in Jannah. May Allah build for us houses in Jannah. Those who put up this facility, may Allah grant them, their forefathers and their children and their families, Jannatul Firdaus. And all of us, may we also be connected. Sometimes you may not have the wealth to build a house. You can frequent the house, you will still be getting your palace in Jannah. You can contribute towards the house, you will still be getting your palace in Jannah. When Allah builds for you, let me explain. You need to compare it with the building of the wealthiest man around us. Say for example, you had a friend who was the richest of the rich in the world. And he said, I want to build a house for you. What type of house do you think he's going to build for you? He's going to build a superb place. He's going to build something that will not, they will not leave a stone unturned. In order to make sure you have the latest and the best facility. Imagine when Allah builds you the house. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. May Allah build for us houses in Jannah. My brothers and sisters, when we came to this earth, we came with nothing, not even clothes. We were clothed by those around us. Wallahi, when we leave, we will leave with nothing material. We will only leave with our deeds. The deeds, what deeds did you do? If you have money and you have amassed it, you won't leave with it. You only leave with what you have spent. That might sound amazing and surprising. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us.
جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته